Alright, what's up you guys? It's Ninja XTX and I'm back to share another video with you guys. This is actually the sixth video in my chair bound purple series. Um Today we're going to discuss food storage and food um preparation slash um How to carry the food. Now, an able bodied, an able bodied um, prepper can have the luxury of carrying the uh, backpacks for the food or um, actually having the food in different locations. We as chairbound preppers cannot often do that. So we have to devise ingenious ways of carrying the food. Um, because if we carry it in a bag, let's say in a book bag or a fanny pack or a uh, utility vest for the food, um, people will see that and marauders or terrorists, whatever you may be, will seek us out as targets. So what we have to do is find ways to hide the food where it is not visible so that we can still get it to the location we need it to be in order for us to consume it or eat it as some people might say. Um, I, um, that is a topic that I'm still researching, uh, because there's really nothing out there unless we invent it, so I'm, I'm still trying to research it and come up with different concepts that I may be able to use and then I will share it with you guys. Now, as for food storage, uh, I look at things like from the old west they use root cellars and whatnot, they use root cellars up until probably about the 1950s, when most people got refrigerators and whatnot, and ice boxes, um, root cellars are a great way to keep the keep your food from being uh, from spoilage, from bacteria. Things like that. Um, but for the differently able, I would say store it in, yes, root cellars, but keep them up on the shelves where you can access them easily. Don't don't put too much food on the bottom, don't put too much food on the top because there's a chance you might not be able to reach it if it's too high and there's a chance you might not be able to reach it if it's too low. Um, now, food preparation, we're not going to have electricity in that doomsday situation, 
Um, and we're not going to have gas in a, in a demonstration situation. So, the best thing for us to eat or prepare to eat are sandwiches and, and I hate to say it, but actually roadkill. Um, now the roadkill is actually stuff you would you would actually not want to eat and or drink. Um, I just don't, I guess it would have been an acquired taste in a situation like this. And I don't think I would have a problem eating something if it was a survival situation where we didn't have any other choice. I don't think that would be an issue. But the issue is actually putting ourselves out there to get the food because I, I hate to say it in the, I hate to say this again, but in the doomsday situation it would be survival of the fittest. So we have to come up with different ways to devise to get the roadkill so we don't have to depend on somebody else to get it for us. Um and two Change your eating habits to berries, to nuts, to beans, to rice, um, plants. Um, that way, if you're ever in a doomsday scenario, your, your body will be used to those type of foods. Um, before, before, or when the situation actually hits. Um, another thing that I had come up with that is a little bit outlandish, but I think it would work in a pinch, is the, I saw someone in a actually on an episode of Doomsday Purpose and I'm not endorsing this show by any means but it's on the National Geographic channel I think it's coming back for season 2 I'm not sure but I had seen someone use a Molotov cocktail on a in a it, in a pit, it was it was an above it was an above ground pit, but it was um you could put the pig or whatever you had to keep whatever you had to hunt on a stick and just lob the. Molotov cocktails at it, and if you think about it, the liquor is easy to burn, and it would actually give the food a flavor. If you, I know this sounds a little bit outlandish, but uh, in a pinch, I think it would work. Um, and I may, I know this may sound a little crazy, but when you're in a survival situation, you have to think outside of the box. Um, now, going back to the food transportation, I mean, theoretically, you could. 
carry it on the back of your chair, but it wouldn't be easy to access. And but I just don't recommend it because if you're carrying food on the back of your chair or dragging it behind you in your chair, there's a chance of somebody coming up and taking it from you. Um and as I said before, that's just a top that's just a part of the topic that I'm going to have to come up with a solution for and I'll let you guys know how that goes. Um food preparation unless you know berries, nuts and whatnot, your and lit and what is poisonous and what's not. You can survive and you can survive off of anything because if you guys have watched it, I think it was it was the first season of Survivor and again I'm not telling any reality shows by any means. But on the first season of Survivor you saw someone eat a rat. Now, that is not something I endorse, but again, in a survival situation, you will eat anything you have to to survive. Uh, that's pretty much it for this um, entry. I'm sorry if it was a little ramblish. It's early in the morning. Um, because I'm recording this at about, um, what time is it now? 7.30 a.m. It probably won't get posted until about 10.30 because I'm having a few problems with my camera, but I will keep you guys posted on what I come up with with the food preparation, so I guess this is an ongoing, um, part to my video or part to my doomsday purpose videos and I hope to continue on the learning journey with you guys um I will be back next Saturday to do a seventh uh, doomsday purpose entry and I am continuing with my spring lesson videos. So be on the lookout for what's coming. Um, please take care of yourselves and each other. One world, one love. Thank y'all. Love y'all. Bye bye. Oh, yeah. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, please send them to my YouTube account. Or if you know how to get